Yes. I'm Carrie Weber Young, and I am just going to tell you guys, I have been waiting for 20 years to share this story. I haven't shared it out loud, even though I've been a public figure and a voice coach and a stage present coach for 15 years. So I teach people how to share their story improvisationally and how to connect with the audience. And this is going to be a challenge for me today, but I'm so, so blessed that all the speakers before me, thank you guys for this opportunity. You guys have just opened my heart today, taken my nerves a little bit down. So I just want to share with you this picture right here is um, obviously, I, if you read my bio, I'm a contagious liver. I believe in one less stranger in the world and through human connection. And this is a weird picture for me. It's a relatively new one for this event and I look not like the Carrie that I know. Um, it's very rare to see me contemplative like this, but this is a bridge. This is from Washington State to Oregon State. I was born in Oregon for about two minutes and then I ended up being raised in Washington State and then I was um, raised my children in Oregon. So it's just kind of a neat way that the gaps between my life have been connected through the bridge. Um, so I'm just gonna get right into this with vulnerability. Um, as people see me as a contagious liver and a happy person, this is gonna really shock a lot of people, but I feel like TED is a place to really, really tell your true story if it can help and reach other people. This bridge hangs in my home as a reminder of the adversity that I overcame in my life. So 25 years ago after the birth of my first son, I had postpartum depression. And um, I'm standing here kind of remembering that I've gotten past it. I was standing on this bridge 25 years ago with my son Austin after a year of struggle and struggle with postpartum depression before it was something we ever acknowledged or talked about before you saw those little commercials. And I was thinking about jumping off this bridge because I had done everything I could for a year and I just could not get anybody to hear me. People said, gosh, Carrie, the light in your eyes is gone, the sparkle's gone. But there just wasn't anything that I could do. This story is not all about suicide and depression, but I wanna share with you that I was standing on this bridge and I had parked my car in the circular part. This bridge opens up and allows all the big barges to come through um, on the, oh, whatever river. Anyways, I was standing at the very crest of that bridge. I had parked my car on the corner and put the window down so, so that my son could breathe. And uh, now I look back, I know that I had that window down so that I could hear him so he could remind me of my purpose. I stood there on that bridge and I was looking down and as I said, I'm a voice coach. And I was thinking, I just can't do this anymore. And this baby boy, this beautiful Austin, deserves a mom with a light in her eyes that could look at him and remind him of all the joy that he brings in the world. And my joy was gone and it was biochemical. I could not figure out how to get back there, but I just knew that looking over the bridge, as I stood there on the end contemplating this huge, huge, huge fall, I remember thinking, it's not humorous, but I look back and I kind of laugh at this. As a voice coach, we're very aware of our vocal cords in, in this region of our bodies. And I'm standing there and I'm looking and I'm thinking, I don't know if I want to deal with that gripping last lump in my throat as I'm going down. And water never occurred to me, any of those fears, because I'm a water person too. We've shared that with a lot of other people today. But my son was parked on this corner and um, it wasn't a safe place to park your child in a car for sure. It's, there's no place for people to walk, but I laid there over the edge, thinking about putting that one leg up over that bridge. I'm thinking about my parents, thinking about the goals I had as a singer, as a future speaker, as an actress, and all the things I've been doing in my life. And, I was so numb from postpartum depression and so tired of everybody looking at me so sadly that this was my moment and uh, everything happens for a reason. That little boy started to yell out of that car where I had left this much for him to breathe. He literally breathed life into me as he was yelling, Mama, Mama, 
my mama from the corner of that bridge. And I could not not hear him. How could I do that? So I realized that day that of all the struggles I've been, and again, I brought you guys to the crest of this moment. It took me every waking moment. I did not stay in bed and try to get over depression. I was out there telling everybody something's wrong with me. Is there anyone that will listen to me? Is there anybody else out there who has this? When you have a new baby, you're supposed to be happy. And I was happy in life at that space. It was a broken thyroid later that really ended up being the cause of this. But that day, I made a choice to not jump off that bridge. And I made a choice to start connecting people to the other side of that bridge. So I chose me. So long and short, I ended up at a doctor. I went to the best psychological, psychology doctor in uh, Portland, Oregon. I had to drive three and a half hours to get there to see this Dr. Khan. I'd heard all these great things about her, but keep in mind as I share this journey with you, please, some of the things don't make sense because when you're so, so, so low, you really don't think like the rest of us do in our daily lives. It's really hard to even understand when your loved ones are hurting. It's just, it's frustrating for those of you that are watching because thank God you can't relate, right? So I went in proactive. I'm going to choose this baby. I'm going to be his mom. I'm going to rise above this. So I went to this doctor's office and I sat in this cute little sitting area with all the pretty little Portland, keep Portland weird artwork. And there was nobody in sight. And I thought, this is really weird. Am I the only person that's feeling this way? On the phone, they told me, oh, come in and see us. We can help you. This is no different than the common cold. You don't have situational depression where you, know, you need to go and figure things out. We're going to get some drugs in your brain. We're going to figure it out. We got you. I was like, OK. But remember, I'm really not feeling anything. So I get there and I sit down and I see these little red and green lights. And they were switching periodically, red, green, red, green. And they caught my attention. And I was like, mm. so I kind of got up, you know, I don't care, cameras, whatever, I don't care because I don't feel anything. And I'm pushing these buttons and I'm playing around with this. And then I go to sit down all of a sudden, like the Wizard of Oz, the doctor that was going to fix me opens the door and she says, Carrie, it's your turn now, come on in. So I walked in there and I said, uninhibited with depression, what are these red and green lights for? I don't get it. And she said, well, because depression is like a mental illness and people don't like to talk about it. And it's just kind of, you know, basically, it's been 20 years ago, but I remember the shame that she shared with me, even though two days ago, um, I had said, my family had said, we need you to see her now, it's the end. And here I am thinking, Red or green, that's what my life comes down to. And I remember, long and short, I saw her three times because she said, I've never met somebody suicidally depressed that is so aware what happiness looked like, what happiness felt like. And so she said, I have absolutely every belief that you're going to feel better and you're going to fix this and we're going to give you some Zoloft and you're going to turn your life around and you're going to go out there. And I remember sitting down like this, like this broken little person, and I sat up above this woman. She's a doctor. I'm just the mom. And I said, I am going to go out there. I'm going to tell every single human being in the world that they are not alone. Postpartum depression is not acceptable. We're going to talk about this, and I'm going to change the way that we talk about depression because I was the happiest girl you ever met. I was annoying in high school. I was that girl. You're like, oh, she's going to come and talk to me. So I made that choice, and I made that decision. I chose me. So I chose to connect. And you're hearing me say the word choose a lot. And as a speaking coach, I tell people not to overuse the words. But life is nothing but a bunch of choices. And so when I chose me, I can't see you all super well, but I chose all of you. I chose to start going out and connecting with people and looking them in the eyes. And, and when I ask you how you're doing, I really listen. I don't ask you how you're doing or how your day is if I don't have time to stop and listen and time to get connected with you. So one smile at a time, or better yet, be a little braver and reach out. Give a handshake, one of those really big, hardcore handshakes that says I'm connected to you. 
And even if you want to go a little step deeper, this is big in our society of phone people and selfie, but ask somebody their name. Who are you? Where did you come from? Where are you going in your journey? Is there any way, any chance that I met you because I have something to share with you that could help you get there? Is there any way that I could give you a hand up, make life just a little bit easier? So I've spent the last decade and a half being a contagious liver, getting up every day and being thankful for the girl in the mirror, whether she's fatter that day or thinner that day or older, whatever we are. There's been so much self-love in here, it inspires me. I ended up starting a Contagious Living FaceTime Live and I've been doing some mental health speaking. Um, I went to a mental health awareness event not that long ago and this really brings me back to this space that I decided I was never gonna share. I went to a mental awareness suicide prevention for suicide survivors event about a month and a half ago, about two weeks before I knew I was gonna be here. Everything happens for a reason. I'm sitting in this beautiful auditorium. People are celebrating their stories of survivorship and I didn't really know everything about the event. It was one of those meetups, hey Carrie, can you come? So I did. And I kept sitting in my chair and, and looking kind of back and the girl that took me says, what are you looking at? And I said, you know, when I speak, I used to be a singer. I was on Broadway for a year have some experience with theaters. It's kind of like somebody said water was to them. The theater is kind of my space, but it's a quieter space for me now. I had looked back and I said, you know those seven seats right smack in the middle? When I take my friends and family to come see me, I make sure that those are reserved for them. Those are my people and those are the best seats, right? I couldn't figure out the whole time we were there. We had intermissions and all these things. And then somebody got up and started addressing the people in the audiences and I realized these were families of the person who passed away. These were families that were left behind. And I kind of thought a survivor was me. I've been living my life as the survivor. I survived that bridge. And the other attempts I didn't share today. And so I'm sitting there and I look back and it just got me Thank you, Oprah, for the aha moment, right? It just got me. Those seven seats were empty to show me a sign that my family was not sitting in those seats as survivors of my suicide because I made a choice that day. And I think it's really, really important for all of us because we're talking about suicide so much that we take the time to listen and I want to say this little tiny tidbit, this was unplanned, but I'm feeling it right now for you. Everybody's been affected by suicide in some way. I want to take the survivors of suicide, the people who are left behind, and I want to share a message with them in the world that you want to wear the responsibility of why your person left you, right? What could you have done more? What if you would have answered that call? What if you would have gotten out of bed at midnight when somebody was just off? I want to share with you that when somebody is in that place as I was, there is not a rescue. You can listen and you can love them and you can show up and you can be all those things. But when those people are hurting oh, so deeply, it's unfortunately a place that you can't relate to, right? Because you're not there and that's a good thing but I just want to share with people that get left behind that as a survivor, it was never about my people. It was never about my mom not loving me enough or somebody didn't give me the right, right pair of Nikes, whatever it is. It was something broken inside of me biochemically. For some people it's situational and that's a whole nother TED talk. But I just want to say to you all, if you're in that space, let it go, let it go. So I am going to get into what this whole journey has led me to is connecting with people and having one less stranger in the world. I want to share that Tanel that was here is the reason that I was able to be here through a connection. I'm going to really condense this for you. I met her on an airplane a year ago 
and she was sitting in what I thought was my seat because I'm superstitious about flying. And I said, ah, uh, you were in my, no, I better not say that. Something told me not to tell her to move. Long and short, we end up having a conversation, total vulnerability about her accident and everything that happened. And we became very good friends. I ended up, I am the fighter for that stall in the bathroom that belongs to her. You do not want to try to take that wheelchair accessible spot if I'm in that bathroom. That brought me here. That led me to Jesse, who's been taking pictures and took this beautiful picture. The other thing I want to share is I was in Hawaii seven years ago. And I met the person that's my rock. And he's here in the room tonight. I met my husband in a swimming pool. He's my no longer one less stranger in the world. And he has been the person that has made it possible for me to have these aha moments and made it possible for me to be on this global mission to be able to connect you and you and you and you. And I just want to say, start reaching out and connecting with each other, you guys. One less stranger is one less lonely person. And we were not made to be separate and alone. And the women in the audience, you are not made to compete with each other. You are made to embrace each other in all your beauty, all of your glory, all your backstories, all your ups and downs. We're better when we stand together. So I want to say to one less stranger in the world, that's me. I'm Carrie Weber Young. Thank you.